that we have a quorum? Yes. Item number two on the agenda, you've been furnished with copies of the minutes of our previous meeting. Are there additions or corrections? It's been moved and seconded. We approve the minutes as submitted. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. The minutes are approved. David, we have item three, the revenue and expenditure report. <clears throat> yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> you have in your packet the MAPS three revenue and expenditure report for the period ending October 31st, 2018. On the revenue side for the month, $76,363. For fiscal year of one million nine hundred three thousand eight hundred ninety, and a total of eight hundred twenty-five million seven hundred forty thousand eight hundred forty-three, on the expenditure side, for the month nineteen million nine hundred twenty-nine thousand one hundred two, fiscal year of forty-five million three hundred fifty-one thousand one hundred sixty-five, and a total four hundred eighty million six thousand eighty-three dollars. Um, you can see that we've. On the expenditure side, because the convention center is, is underway, there's a significant amount there. With park is underway, significant amount there, and then streetcar is the bulk of the expenditures. And then you also have your budget and obligations report for the period ending November 1st, and I'll try to answer any questions. Questions for David? Michael, uh, any I comment? Just, no, I just, I just, just comment. Interest rates are up, so that's good. But obviously, that amount will go down as we spend more money. But the, uh, you know, those are kind of funds that, that are coming in that we probably haven't considered yet. So I just point that out. And those would then be added to David what we what we're calling excess funds, right? <laughs> yes, sir. It's uh, excess funds and interest. All right. Well, that's a a pleasant observation, Michael. Thank you. And I move that we accept the report. Been moved and seconded. We accept the report as provided. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. The reports are received. Uh, you've also been furnished uh, previously a copy for you to consider for the uh, advisory board meeting schedule. David, any comments about that? <clears throat> this is something that is required by the Oklahoma Open Meetings Act, and we must publish a schedule. We've done this every year. And this uh, is consistent with the times with, uh, that we've been meeting in the past? Yes, sir. Any questions about the proposed meeting schedule? I move that we accept the meeting schedule. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the meeting schedule for the calendar year 2019 as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> no. The schedule is approved. Item five, David. Item five is recommend resolution approving change order number seven, MAPS three convention center, increase of one million two hundred seventy one thousand fifty two dollars, project M three C 3 If you'll recall, last month we did a change order for the foundations for this extra uh, service elevator <clears throat> that uh, we would like to put in the convention center for redundancy as far as uh, the the elevators go. <clears throat> we. Uh, we worked with the subcommittee and originally had a ballpark estimate of about $2 million. And with this number, this will it'll come in between 1.7 and 1.8. So it comes in less than what, what we had estimated early on. Um, this comes with the uh, approval from the subcommittee. And then also item two is a credit for some time because the, the previous change orders were done independent of each other. And because they have uh, common time, we were able to recover some of that time. So there's $36,000 of time that is being brought back because we accepted all of the change orders. Questions for David? Second. Been moved and seconded. We approve the resolution as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the resolution is approved. Item six, David. <clears throat> Item six is a presentation on streetcar projects. As you know, uh, construction is, is fairly uh, complete, 
And we're, what does fairly mean? Well, we, we are, we are 99% complete. We have a, f a few little things here and there, but the, the testing phase is ongoing, and I um, wanted to bring a presentation to you today to show you where we are. So I'd like to invite Doug Smith from Jacobs Engineering up to the podium. Welcome, Doug. Morning, Mr. Chairman. Morning, board members. All right, so we do have a lot of progress to show you. We're near the end here, so um, a lot of fun pictures and exciting things to talk about. First of all, this is a tracking chart that we use on our vehicles up in Brookville. And as you can see, the first six rows are filled in. There's a few things on number six, the sixth row there that we're completing on site and with the final testing of that one. And then the last one, the 17005, is vehicle number seven. And you might remember that was something we were able to add to the project that improves the reliability of the overall system. With five cars in service normally, we have two out of service, which gives us a 40% ratio of out of service vehicles. And that really helps with Embark's ability to provide a good level of service all the time with those five cars. So that number seven is now, uh, that's showing it was in final testing in Brookville, but just this week it was delivered. So now we have it in Oklahoma City. And, uh, and so we'll be getting that row filled in there uh, with some of the on-site testing. And you see one of the things there was the pre-ship inspection in Brookville. So some of those things were filled in just within the last few days. Now here's some pictures of it just before it left Brookville. So you can see those windscreens being installed, the bellows that go between the three sections of the streetcars. Those are now, those were installed before they shipped it. The, the A end operator cab, all the electronics are in there and, and that's all getting cleaned up and then they put those front door panels on so that uh, it's all skirted. And then they, they pull those skirts off so they can ship it and then they're put back on here on site in Oklahoma City. They do a final water test of the, uh, there's a couple of different water tests that go on. This is the final water test on number seven. And then this is one of the trucks that's, this is the frame of the truck that goes under the vehicle and they're using a device to actually check dimensions on it before they ship it. And there's two of these that are still in Brookville and they're spare parts. So by the end of the month, we're expecting that those will be shipped. And then at that point, we have nothing from the factory in Brookville that we need anymore. Everything we'll have on site in Oklahoma City, which is great news, just right for the schedule. So uh, the delivery and acceptance status is um, we have number six that's, um, that's been recommended for conditional acceptance. That means that it's gone through the performance testing. And we then send that through to city council for them to recommend it. And then at that point, we do some things like exchange titles and that kind of thing on, on the vehicle. And then number seven is working its way through the conditional acceptance process. And it'll probably be at the early December city council meeting or if all goes well and, and they meet all the terms for acceptance. In terms of testing, as you know, we've been running around the Brookville Loop and, and the, the Bricktown Loop and the Midtown Loop. And so that's ongoing. We're getting a lot of mileage on the cars. We're, we're debugging. Um, this, is, this is what we really hope for, that we had plenty of time to be able to run these vehicles through the paces and put miles on them. And, and if, we're gonna, if they're going to show us things that are wrong, we're going to find out now before we carry passengers. So. A lot of that's going on and we'll continue that into mid-November and then we'll get to the point near the end of November where we'll start simulating revenue service without passengers, but it'll be simulated. So now moving on to the main line, this is a progress map that we show the subcommittee every month and this map is now 100% filled in. Our track is all in place. Our OCS foundations, with the exception of five of them on 5th Street, on the north side of 5th Street, we're not in place as of the date of this map, which was the end of October, but those are also in place now. So everything on this map that you see is 100% installed by our mainline contractor. All the other items, utilities were clear, clear a long time ago. The station stops, all 23 of them are in. That includes the one on EK Gaylord, which is number 23. Contact wire is all up. All the, the power is on. The traction power substations are all energized and working as we run cars around. So um, that is the last time you'll need to see that map. Here's a few pictures of some of the last items on the main line. Some of you were there for that celebration of the final pour there at the end of October. And th this is a couple of days before that where they were filling in the track there on 5th Street. 
you can see in the lower right there's a memorial gate to the west and then of course there's a picture of that plaque that's set in the street out there so great celebration out there to celebrate the end of pouring concrete on track now you have an agenda item following this on your on, on your agenda um, uh, regarding a couple of change orders and so this this one for the main line number 17 it's a sizable change order it it has a lot of items that are in there and some of them are smaller so on this slide I won't get any detail and of course we're happy to answer any questions when that comes up next on your on your agenda item but on this one I'll point out a couple of things uh, first of all number 18 is a large dollar amount you see the 675,000 that is a contract settlement that we did with our mainline contractor and I'm going to detail that here in a minute for you the uh, bottom item there number 20 I wanted to highlight that because with the fifth street part of the project we did add that in late in the game we were we were checking schedule and funding and, and if we could afford to include it in the project and so we did include it but at the time we included it and by the time the, some of the poles and power systems for that were ordered, we realized that it was going to push us into as far out as March and April. And that wasn't going to be an acceptable outcome for our general contractor because of extended overheads, keeping them on site, and, and just basically the delays on the project. And so we started pulling some of those things out of the project just to be able to deliver what we have, make sure we do it right. So what we've done is we've taken some of those power systems out. And what that means is that on the 5th Street where the vehicle turns off of Broadway at Broadway and 5th and turns on there, we're, we're not going to put up any catenary poles there. We're not going to put the catenary wire up. We're not going to power the train switch, which is at 5th and Broadway, although the switch can be used in a manual way if Embark wanted to go out there and, and have someone open up the box and, and throw the switch. But um, that's not going to be able to have power because of those systems. And so. Um, that's why we started pulling some of those things out to make sure we, we hit schedule and budget. There is an amendment component to this change, and this is where we look at the quantities on our job. We have over 400 unit price items on this contract, so those are always being adjusted, and this is another one of those adjustments. A big one was on the Fifth Street's turn back. Again, some of these things coming out and crediting back to the project. So we're trying to keep these amendment items in balance, watching the contract contract budget, watching the change order budget. So this is all part of that process. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about that one big settlement item on the change order contract. And so first of all, as, again, it's a, it was a $50 million contract, as you recall. We have a joint venture of two major national contractors. And so um, th this is, uh, you know, this can be tough stuff when we get into the disputed items and then the um, some of the extended overheads that they start looking at. So um, all this kind of came down into a final negotiation where we had to sit down and work out a closeout on this contract with them. And some of the things we listed here are some of the disputed items that had come up as we went through the construction. For example, um, they assumed when they bid it that they could use a recycled aggregate-based product under the track slab. And when they submitted that to us, we disagreed that that, was, that that met the specification. So we had a long discussion over a year or more about whether that product was acceptable. Um, and and we, uh, we directed them to install a clean aggregate, not a, not a recycled product in there because we weren't confident of the quality of the recycled aggregate base. They carried that as a disputed item, and so we needed to close that out. There's a few other things on there that, um, that were disputed as we went through construction. And then there were some extended overheads on, on the overhead items closed. There was a request for equitable adjustment, which is a sequencing, um, the times that we asked them to sequence something differently. And so that was one of the items that we closed. So we detailed all those items on this slide. And so a few things that I'll, I'll highlight for you in terms of the amounts. The item number one was the recycled aggregate base. You see that was the contractor's claim that they asked for, disputed item. Uh, a few other things, uh, for example, number nine, the overall project completion. So what we did is we extended some milestones in some of the previous change orders. And so they, had, they were entitled to ask for extended overheads because we're asking them to stay mobilized on site longer than they had anticipated. 
So that 143,000 there on item 9 is an example of us extending them beyond their contract completion date. So there are uh, the number 10, the resequencing, REA, resort, um, an equitable request for equitable adjustment, the 210,000. So these, are, these were their claims that we came up, that we, we reviewed with them. And so we, along with the MAP staff, sat down with them and we had our set of numbers, as you would in any negotiation, and we finally added item number 13, which was a settlement credit that we put to the bottom, and we ended up with the 675. It was a number that um, we felt was a, a decent negotiated settlement for everyone. So we walked away from the table with that amount, and um, I, all I can tell you is it required a lot of effort, a lot of detail to the numbers, and that's, that's where we ended up. And, and so. Anyway, happy to answer any questions on that. I'm probably giving you more detail than you need. But oh, uh, one thing we talked about with the subcommittee is what we got for that settlement is we did get a lot of efficiency on the project. Um, there were intersections that were being closed that we had to ask them not to close. Um, just simple business impacts. So. Um, one of the things that I think the subcommittee took away is that, that, that some of this money that was spent on this, on this resequencing of the work really went back to our, our business owners and, and um, to, to benefit them, to, to lessen the impact on them in the community. So uh, I thought that was a good point. It was made there. All right, so we'd like to have Kristen come and give you an outreach update. A lot of, a lot of interesting things going on. Good morning, everybody. Um, I just want to give you a quick update on what's happening with the outreach. So I'm still handling um, the MAPS communication as far as if there's little pieces of construction left, like 7th excuse me, 7th and Broadway. But now that it's slowing down, as was pointed out, um, I'm also doing community engagement for Embark. <clears throat> so it's a, it's a transition that makes sense, as I know all of the businesses and property owners along the route. So the Embark team has developed a program for all of the businesses along the route and it's called um, Love the Loops. It's a partnership program. And so we're basically just spending our time now talking to all the different business alliances and districts and going over all the details with them so they're aware. Um, I've put together a PowerPoint on how to ride the streetcar so anybody, you know, whether it's a business or if it's maybe a neighborhood association who wants somebody to come speak to them to teach them, I'm more than willing to do that whenever. We're also having a track meet every month. We've already had two. We did one for the Midtown Walkabout and then one for Brick or Treat. And then we're gonna have our third one um, in Automobile Alley this Saturday. And it's in conjunction with the Lights on Broadway event. And it's basically a good opportunity where we can go park a vehicle, which this one will be staged um, in front of the Broadway Wine Merchants location at that platform. So the public can get on, look at the streetcar, get comfortable with what the experience will eventually be like for them. They can ask whatever questions that they want. We are also gonna be handing out t-shirts and then there's a new hype video that was created. Um, so we're gonna be projecting that onto a wall so people can see that as well. So like I said, we'll be doing this once a month um, in different locations along the route. Um, and basically it's just making sure that people have a, a good understanding of what to expect when we open. Do you all have any questions for me? You've done a great job, and it's been a difficult job, and I'm glad to hear how well things are going. Do you sense a kind of a mood of relief from all the business owners and so forth? Is everybody's bouncing back okay? I think they're getting there, yep. Good. Yes. Well, congratulations. Thank you. You've done a really good job. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks. Question? Sue? So, starting December 1st now, Will we be able to ride the streetcars? So uh, the opening date is still looking like December the 14th. 14th. Yeah, so and that's the ribbon cutting. Then. Right. So okay. the ribbon cutting is at 10 o'clock a.m. at Leadership Square. Okay. And that'll start all the events. I have a completely un uh, unrelated question. Some months ago there was, I still remember the discussion about the driverless streetcar. Mm -hmm. We're going to maybe research that. Has anything been done with that? No, that hasn't moved forward. Um, we're 
there, there's a uh, there's a need to push to for various parties to get together and fund that. And so, um, but that, that's a great question. We don't talk about that very much because everyone's so focused on the task at hand. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. It's something that, that should be thought about in the future once we get this thing running. So, yep. All right, so um, we have a few more slides for you to talk about the testing and commissioning, which is um, probably the most important thing we're focused on right now. So. There, we have our different sections, our maintenance facility and the Hudson non-revenue track. We're still testing our new vehicles out there. And then we have this process which we call certifiable elements, which is an important term to the state, uh, the state safety office, Oklahoma DOT, and the FTA. So we go through and, and we measure these things. We provide pictures. We, we sign off inspection reports. And we have all these documents go into a big folder. and and so that when we're ready for them to send us a letter that says, we agree that your system, uh, based on our review, it's safe for passengers and you're ready to open. And that's a, a key thing that we need for them. We've got to have that letter from them. So they will look at all the, this data that we have and look at our performance testing and our certifiable elements, our integrated tests. And then um, and th that's what they call their readiness review. So that lower right-hand bullet there, the SSO readiness response, we're very much in the middle of that right now with them. Um, we've gotten a preliminary review from them. We're responding to their comments. We just had a phone call with them this morning. Um, but the, uh, the state SSO is, they want to make our date work. They, are, they have another consultant that we're, that we're working with. And so we're trying to work through the process with them and, and answer all their questions. But um, from our team's perspective, we don't see any problems with being able to get to the opening date. At this point, is just answering their questions, providing the documentation that they need, getting all the sign-offs. We have several committees and teams. There's a certification committee, an integrated testing committee, a rail activation committee. These committees meet as much as three times a week to be able to go over the certifiable elements, make sure the things are getting signed off and in place. So there's a lot of activity and certification right now. One of the things that, that came out of this team is, is that um, the lifting equipment at the maintenance facility, that maybe it wasn't as safe as it could be. And so we added this guide to these large jacks that jack up the 100,000 pound streetcar to make sure that it's perfectly aligned. We made some additions to the floor to make sure it's perfectly level. These are all things that, that come out of the safety process. And um, we also have a small change order that's also an agenda item for you, which is related to adding some things to the maintenance facility for the new equipment that's going in. The SCADA is the way that we communicate with the power substations and with the vehicles. We had to do some adjustment there by adding some things in the communication room. And there's a couple of other small items, one of those being item three that I just described to you, those, those adapter plates. And then finally, uh, here's an example of what we do when we test on the main line. So this is checking the platform gaps. And this is a pretty big deal because we can't have more than a three inch gap to meet ADA requirements to make sure that wheelchairs and other things that would, you know, we are a level boarding system. So we have to check that gap. There's also, we have to make sure it's not too tight. And we've got a tolerance on our vehicle, the three section of the vehicle, how they're all hooked together and how because there is a, a variation on the side of the vehicle between the A, B, and C sections. There's a, a very small tolerance there. And then there's a tolerance on the concrete platform and the formwork and everything that was done. So we have to check and make sure that gap is just right, not too wide, not too narrow. And everything is now signed off on those platform gaps. But that, there's many other things that we test when we go through the system. But that's just an example of one of them. So that's the update for you today. And at this point, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Wow, pretty exciting. <laughs> any questions? Yeah. Bob? Yeah, just looking ahead, I understand from media accounts that the first month or so or a few weeks, everybody will be able to ride for free and then we'll start charging uh, for the rides. Uh, once we get to the point of having to pay for the ride, how does one do that? Uh, are there I haven't noticed on the platforms where there 
kiosk or something where you buy a ticket, or are there other locations where you can get a, a streetcar ticket? Each platform does have a, a ticket vending machine. It's just covered right now so that people don't think that it's active. But it's, it's that thing that's covered in the orange cover. So there'll be, there'll be tickets there. I think Embark is working eventually to have an app. It, Embark's working on it. David. When we started this project, there was a lot of horror stories about other cities and, and their, their streetcar projects and how cars were delivered late and, and uh, huge cost overruns and all. And so I've got the general impression this has gone fairly well. Is that fair? I think it's, it's grossly fair. <laughs> uh, we have been fortunate with uh, our vendor for the, for the streetcars. Construction has gone uh, really well, all things considered. I know it's been a an impact on uh, some businesses. There's been traffic delays, and, and I, I just can't tell you how much we appreciate the public's willingness to work with us on that, but we've gotten through that point. Um, all things considered, it has gone pretty pretty smooth, I think. Well, in that regard, I'd like to commend the MAPS office, Jacobs, the contractors, Brookville, ADG, whoever else has been involved in that, Embark, whoever else has been involved in that process. Thank you. For, for making this go so smooth. It does seem like it's gone well based on some of the horror stories you've heard from other cities. So thank you that much. Can I ask a question? Um, if you have the, the option to buy a ticket, what about people that just walk on? I mean, once you get your ticket, is there any method to say that you're on the – I mean, Chris, is there any way of checking it? Any of that? Come up. Uh, and in case you, you don't know also, Kristen was with ADG for – for years and was our liaison, she's taken a job with Embark. So she's actually an Embark employee now, doing pretty much the same function that she was doing for the MAPS office. Yes. So the um, ticket vending machine on the platform, you can purchase a boarding pass, which is a dollar, and then you can purchase a day pass for three dollars. If you go to the app, you could purchase the dollar, the three dollar, or a monthly or an annual pass. So if you're already on the streetcar, and you have not purchased a ticket, I would use your app to do that. What if you choose not to? What if there are people that just want to ride it free? How do you prevent that? So there's going to be a basically a ticket um, inspection officer that's going to be going around and checking this. And so if you do not have a ticket, they will just ask you to exit the vehicle at the next platform. All right. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you. Yes, just it's roaming the vehicle. It's not just on a right. spot basis. So we're routine. I have another question. Go ahead, Sue. I, along the same line. So is there any kind of a rule about age of riding a streetcar unattended? I see you smiling. <laughs> you mean, can, can you be too old? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's not an age limit, but there are reduced fares. So, um, I think it's six and under rights are free, seven to something off to check um, is also reduced, and then 65 plus is a reduced fare. So there's a benefit to being older. <laughs> but basically you're going to have to have some kind of a smart device to show that you've purchased a ticket. So a phone, well, if app. You yeah, if you, purchase, if you purchase the ticket from the ticket vending machine, it'll shoot out a ticket, oh, okay. a paper ticket. So they'll but that's only, that's only to board, so that's a one-time boarding, mm -hmm. or it's a day pass. Okay. If you have, let's say, a monthly pass, you'll have a ticket that shows up on your phone that you can show the ticket inspection officer then. Okay. And you can also purchase tickets, like let's say your family comes into town, mm -hmm. you could purchase tickets for them when you know that they're going to be here and transfer them over. Okay, perfect. Is there any kind of combo for streetcar and the bus? Embark is looking at that. I'm sorry? Embark is currently looking at that. One more question. <laughs> sorry. Um, what about the, the, okay, so you've got a ticket officer on the, I'm just saying this because I've ridden trams in other countries and cities sure. and stuff. What if there's like a fight or a crime or whatever? Will they be authorized to take care of that on the, on the tram? That's my understanding. Okay. Yes. 
Other questions? Well, thank you guys. Very exciting. I would just like to add from yes, the thanks. subcommittee's meeting yesterday, it was discussed that some of the vendors are experiencing a little bit of a hangover effect from, from you know, when there's all the construction's going on, it's been difficult. People have said, oh, I'm not going back down to Broadway anymore. I, you know, you can't get anywhere. And now that that's opened back up, business still hasn't come back up to what it was before the construction started. So for a shout out for those businesses, I would say they're open. You can get down there now easily without any uh, uh, disruption. So continue or go back to using those businesses and visiting those businesses just like you were before. Okay. Thank you, Zane. Other questions? Well, thank you. Uh, that brings us then to uh, the action items that Doug mentioned. The first one is uh, item number seven on your agenda. It was the second one he talked about. It's uh, change order number 12, uh, the $29,000 item. David, any, do we need any other explanation other than what we heard from Doug? I don't think so. All right. Been moved and seconded. We approve the resolution presented in item seven. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The resolution is approved. <laughs> item eight is the first item that Doug explained, the larger item uh, that talked about uh, a number of things, but including the settlement. Is that right? And that is uh, change order number 17 and amendment number 16. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, are there questions or further discussion about that item? I, I'd just like to add that at the subcommittee meeting yesterday, we did not have a quorum, but there was a lot of discussion about this item to clarify what it was for, for some of the subcommittee members. And when it was brought out that, hey, a lot of these uh, changes or some of the resequencing changes and some of the overhead costs were due to request from the city to the contractor to delay working in a particular area because of a vent that either the vendors were having or the city was having, having them move someplace else and then come back to that uh, area to finish off their work. A lot of those were, those changes were driven at our request. And once that was made aware to um, the streetcar subcommittee members that had businesses on Broadway and they understood that they were much more acceptable uh -huh. to this um, and they realized that they thought the contractor and the city had worked together with the uh, construction teams to to the benefit of those vendors, and they realized that it was it was well worth it for them. So, uh, like I said, we did not have a quorum, but this does come with the recommendation of those members that were present. Further questions or discussion? Shall we shall we approve it? It's been moved and seconded that we approve the resolution shown in item eight. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The resolution <coughs> is approved. Thank you, guys. Keep up the good work. Uh, that brings us to item uh, nine, David. Uh, item nine is recommend joint resolution with the Oklahoma City Water Utilities Trust approving amendment number 10, maps three Hudson Avenue street improvements, a decrease of $18,682, accepting the project and placing the maintenance bond into effect. Project M3-P004A, PC0479, and WC0889. If you'll recall, <clears throat> Hudson needed to be reconstructed, and it was a, a joint funding source from the uh, streetcar, <clears throat> from the park, and from pu Public Works bond money. The project is complete. It looks great. I'm glad that we've got that street replaced. Um, and as I said, this is a decrease on the project. I'll answer any questions you might have. Is this, this is the decrease related to the streetcars? It's a decrease related to um, reconciling quantities at the end of the project. Right, but, but wasn't there a credit for the streetcar and a credit for the park? Um, this will be for, for both of them. Both. So this, this is 18000 twice. Right. No, no, it's 18000 total oh. for, for both. I thought it was a third, a third, a third. 
Well, but what we're showing in this memo is the total amount. The funding might break out. That I, um, Public Works has spent their money, so it should be just park and um, streetcar. Yeah. I don't, I mean, this looks like it. Okay. So if you look at your source of funds at the end of the, of, of the memo on the second and third page, it's a source of funds is park, utility, engineer, construction. And then streetcar, transit, streetcar, Hudson reconstruction. So it'll be split between those two. Go back to them. Okay. I move that we accept the resolution. Is there further discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The resolution is approved. Uh, that brings us to item 10 on the agenda. You'll recall that we asked uh, David and the MAP staff to bring us a plan that uh, had to do with the possible usage of the uh, excess funds that we haven't already considered in, in, for action in one way or another. And this was based on the original uh, request from the subcommittees and so and the sense of the timing issues that were involved and so there's been included in your packet an excess funding plan uh, I, uh, this is not on the agenda today as an action item but rather as one to be discussed and david's going to lead that discussion for us uh, this my sense of this is that we would discuss this today and it there would be an opportunity to review and then to go back to the various subcommittees and see if there are any uh, changes of thought or additions or uh, changes. And we would treat this just as we do every other project working, working through the subcommittee process and then come back at a future date to consider this. Is that consistent with your thought about this, David? <clears throat> yes, sir. As you said, we were asked to do this, and, and this is what we've talked about for uh, quite a while, a, about a plan on how to do this. So uh, the MAPS office worked in conjunction with our consultant. Jason Cotton's here today just to kind of run through this a little bit to, to start off the oh, great. conversation. So I'd like to invite him up. Chairman, <clears throat> board members, good to see everybody this afternoon. So, uh, so yeah, basically, just real briefly, we put together basically an implementation plan for the excess funds. Um, and so one of the consistent messages that's been out in, uh, in all the subcommittee meetings and the Citizens Advisory Board meetings is that uh, projects that are time sensitive in nature, that those excess funds would uh, be used to support those when appropriate. And so you can see a lot of those projects uh, up at the top, primarily the, uh, the improvements that are being done out at the river uh, that recently uh, got approved. Also, uh, the uh, the funding for um, uh, Wellness Center One, the new improvements out there to expand operations there, and then of course Union Station that's uh, under uh, design feasibility study uh, currently. So all of those projects appear at the top. Those funds are really, in a way, have already been kind of appropriated and released to start those projects moving forward. Um, the, the last four projects, basically, what we're trying to show here is that. Um, the ability or what we can do with the excess funds is kind of contingent on how the projects are sequenced or phased. And so uh, what the schedule basically kind of describes is that there, there are there's favorable bids on the convention center, so there's some excess money that could potentially be realized there. Uh, but at this point in time, that project is not done, and so it's hard for us to count on those dollars in essence. And so basically what we've done is we've uh, provided a schedule which allows us to move a couple of the larger projects that have been proposed as a part of the excess fund conversation, uh, primarily the uh, $13 million in trail improvements and the fifth wellness center out to a point in time where we feel like uh, there'll be a lot less uh, uh, possibility of additional costs at the convention center. Basically, we would uh, be able to delay that conversation or that decision until a point in time when it, uh, we really needed to decide between one of those two projects. Um, the other projects that are shown here on this list, fair, uh, some improvements out at the fairgrounds, which are shown to start sometime in April of next year. Uh, and then also some uh, street cars, some additional work for the street cars. So I think there was a, a truing machine and some additional uh, equipment for the street car project. And so those are reflected there uh, again in March of, of next year. So 
Uh, again, it's just summary. It's, a, it's in draft form. Um, and so really we're just bringing it here to you today for information, just uh, to get some input from you guys and, and see uh, where the discussion leads, I guess. So. <clears throat> Right, and we what we've done is we've tried to, to show how the funding tracks, those three lines at the bottom below the colored bars, <clears throat> the first line shows us available funds. So we start at 29, which is what we have right now with excess funds. And then we estimate that in December um, of 2019, we anticipate that that would be the point where we could start tapping into any extra convention center money that's that's out there. So there's half of it, and then you see that in April of 20 and July of 20, there's 5 million and 6 million to take up the whole $22 million. Then the second line shows the expenditures as these projects happen. That's how much we would be spending for them. And then the very bottom line gives you the, the running balance of the excess funds. Um, part of this also is based on the MAPS office's ability to, to do these projects, because we have streetcar finishing uh, the end of the year, but we'll still be working on that for two or three months trying to wrap it up. We've got the park that'll be ramping up in the summer and finishing then. We've got convention center that's ongoing. Um, we've got two wellness centers that are ongoing. So some of this schedule is, is for that reason also. But if you'll note, the, the most obvious delays in projects are the uh, trails and sidewalks and the, and the possible, or trails, not sidewalks, but trails, and then the possible wellness five. And at that point, that's when that decision will have to be made when we can take some of that money out of the convention center. Of basically, we'll have to decide which we're going to do. Are we going to do more trails? Or are we going to do fifth wellness center? Or at that time, if conditions have changed such that we even do something different? So in reading this, it looks like we end up with an excess of 9.9 .9 million. No, that's a deficit. That's, that's a, a deficit. deficit. We have okay. we have more requests than we have available or anticipated funds. That's where the decision making process will come, and why this is valuable for us to look at to think about. I think, Michael. The line that says total available funds it says 51 million. That's the total. That's the request, I guess, right? That would be the, the total with what we have now and the convention center yeah, money. That's the request, I guess, that, that everybody's made, the 51 million. Uh, is the request? Um, no, that, that is what would be available with the funds. So that's the 29 plus, I guess you're saying, 22 from the convention center. Correct. And the 22 from the convention center is the amount the bid was under? That's correct. Okay. And so they still have contingencies, too, I suppose. That's correct. So they may or may not use up all of those. So that that's correct, but there are some some things going on in that area that um, you know still have us in the dark a little bit. The, what improvements might happen on Fourth Street, funding for Robinson. Um, so there's still a lot of things up in the air. Yeah, um, David, just to, to clarify your point for me, Michael, the looking only at the block on the left hand side of the page where it says total available funds, that, that's the money available. But we don't have a total of all of those things under the cost item. That is correct. And, and so I think maybe Michael and I were wondering, if you added that column up, what would that say? I think it's 51 million, right? I mean, that's the request. Uh, well, if we end up or you're funding all this and we've got an, an nine, almost $10 nine million, nine million. So it would be, so be 61. So it's 61. So I remember 50 million requests. So has, has something been added to the list? Um, well, the original list did not include the money for the uh, at the improvements at Wellness Center Number One. That's correct. And um, I can't think of what else. Can you? No, I can't. Oh, maybe maybe the original request that we saw did not include the extra money for that we've already approved for the streetcar. That was about four million. I think that was in there. Yeah, oh, so what, what we're not well. Is, is the river? River, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is the river? The river was, river the river was in there as a request. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's but that, that's why we have a nine point nine million dollar shortfall at the end because that number is more than the available funds. Okay. Is that right? I think that, I think I, yes, I do see the sixty. <laughs> okay, great. I, I do. Work. So okay. So the the so. rosiest, I, I, and you said it, Tom. But the rosiest scenario would be none of the money, contingency money for convention center, 
you would need that it would all be available even if that happens we're still nine ten million dollars short that's right yeah. to do everything yes yeah. right. to do everything that's been asked for right. yes right. and so and this assuming they, they use up all their contingency that's, that's true. true yeah assuming they use up all their contingency and the other point i'll bring up is that the thing i mentioned earlier today on the interest that when, when we got the number uh, that I think Craig Friedman gave us a couple of months ago came down to 33 million in excess collections. That had a number for interest had been collected to that date. And we've continued to collect interest and will continue to collect interest. The number that Craig Friedman gave us also included a projection of what that right. uh, collected and last month, would be. Uh, last month he stopped doing the projections right, just because he didn't have any, he didn't have any future. It, it was interest as of that date. It was 20. One million. Anyway, it's been about a million two in interest collected since then, and we'll continue to collect some interest. Again, that will decline because as we spend money, there'll be less money to earn interest on. But, but that's another source of potential funds uh, that yes. might help us in this regard. So, I, I just, I, I, so it's another uh, cushion. So Tom, then, it, so what we're saying is that when the convention, when we know how much the convention center is going to cost. That's when we'll make a decision about the excess funds for the other, like the trails and the wellness center. Is that is that basically what you're saying? Well, I, I think that's up to us to decide. But I, I would just say that we already know that we have $29 million that's available without the convention center money. And so if there were items that all of us thought about and agreed to were things that we needed to, because of timeliness factors, we could go ahead and spend some of that money as well, uh, but the, we will not have the total money available until we know that we have the convention center money. And so just a, one of the reasons that I think that there is a value in going back to all the subcommittees is to reconsider. I'll, I'll mention just a couple of examples. One of them is on the park. We know that there's a feasibility study being done. And, that, and, and we also know that the $10 million they requested for uh, the Union Station was a an estimate without the feasibility study. So that could come back six million, or it could come back fifteen. And so, uh, and the same thing in the senior wellness. We we know that uh, we we wonder if we if we allowed enough for inflation because of the the time span that's expired on wellness centers three and four, not to even mention five. So there are a lot of things for the subcommittees, I think, to take into account to determine whether or not that first guess, that first estimate that we made on the wish list for the excess funds, how that's setting now and whether there are new priorities or different ones and and what, what those asks ought to be. So I, I think this is a starting point for all of us, uh, and uh, but we did talk about at the convention center subcommittee yesterday whether or not there was any possibility of us asking for any of the excess money, and I think I left there thinking that's not going to be we. The convention center subcommittee will not have any reason to ask for any excess money that we can see now, but but virtually every other subcommittee does, and so. I think this is a, a good basis for us to go back and start the process to bring back ideas about how we use, how we finally use the excess money. And, and let me point out also that the December of 2019 line between Trails and Wellness 5, um, it will be better informed at that point because hopefully we will have passed MAPS 4 and we'll know what, what is in MAPS 4. And also, um, We'll be further along on, on the next two wellness centers, and we'll have more performance data on the first two. And you have your and actually, that was going to be my spent too on trails. So. Actually, that was going to be my question, David. In thinking about maps for the timing that some of this stuff that we may decide we want to include, we would recommend that we decide we would recommend be considered for inclusion in maps four. It, it could be. I, I, we would have to make that decision. <clears throat> before obviously the convention center is done, uh, right? I'm, I'm not following you. Well, if we decide, let's say wellness center number five, for instance, that there wasn't money to do it because of the priorities and the board and the council decided the, others, um, uh, the other projects would be included, 
but we would need, in, in, and if there is a wellness center number five that we would include it in a map score, we would need to know that so that in time that, that it would be included in map score. Sure. <clears throat> right. But what, what you have here in December of 19 is basically a choice whether it's going to be wellness center five or trails. <clears throat> so the idea of pushing it back that far is for what I stated to be better informed and, and we would know if, if maps four is going to start continue to do wellness centers I, I don't know but if it does that might uh, incline this group to say well we don't need to do that here it's being done and we can do the trails or if they do a bunch more trails vice versa yeah but right now we know that there are additional things that the streetcar needs that, that, that they would like they're not you know, going to stop operations, but there's certainly some convenience items, and it never hurts to have more spare parts and those kind of things. Um, there are some things at the fair park that um, will always benefit them, and then the the work on Union Station are things that we feel like are a more priority than the other things that are yet to be determined. Not to muddy the waters. But Go ahead. I'd like to toss out another thought. Um, these, all these projects, these capital projects, are owned by the city, even though they may have operators. And it falls to the city to continue to maintain the capital, not operations, but the capital. So if a pump fails at a senior center, or a disease knocks out 500 trees in the park, or um, fairground air conditioning system goes out, they're going to come back to the city and want, need those things replaced. Some of, these, some of these have operators, and the operators have some responsibility in that area, but big projects like that are probably going to come back to the city. And so it might be prudent to think about setting aside some money just for capital maintenance going forward on the projects that we've supported here. I think that was done in MAPS 1. Uh, by the use tax money, the, the, the MAPS use tax, I think, at the end of the project was designated to go to capital maintenance for those projects. The use tax on our, our MAPS money, I think, has been used by the council for the most part for public safety. So I don't know if there's any use tax money there. But that might be another line item to kind of toss out here and say, you know, toward the end of this thing, if there's money left over, rather than trying to find you know, another place to spend it or another project or something, we might consider setting aside some money in that regard. And, and since, you know, just since the interest, you know, has kind of been capped in our projections, if we wanted to say any future interest, you know, on the projects, let's set that aside for maintenance. I'm not proposing that today, but it's just another thought process. I think it might be prudent for us to think about how are some of these projects going to be maintained after, we're, after this is gone and after there's no more MAPS money to do it. You know, do we want to set aside some of this money for the city to be able to use in those regards? Your conversation just spurred a thought in my mind about how Mayor Holt has requested the citizens that if anybody has ideas about what we would like to see in MAPS for to participate in that discussion. And possibly moving forward with MAPS, a percentage of the collections could go exactly to that same fund, much in the same way that 1% of construction budget goes to art. So that there is, we are building a moratorium or, a, you know, a, some type of fund to help MAPS projects in continuum. So the further the franchise goes on, the further it helps all of the projects. Okay, good ideas. Anyone else? Well, then, uh, you have this document to take with you and to think through, and we, I'm, I'm, uh, confident that uh, there'll be a, a spirited discussion at the subcommittee meetings and more good ideas will come back. So if there's nothing else about that discussion item, let's go to item 11, new business. Any new business, David? No, sir. Any member have new business to bring forward? All right. Uh, the subcommittee reports. Uh, any subcommittee want to add something that we haven't heard about today? All right, uh, David, that brings us to lucky number 13, <laughs> the David Todd report. Uh, well, um, just want to mention a, a few things. We've begun working on some of the new river projects within our office. Uh, senior Wellness, um, I think everybody knows centers one and two are open. Center three, we've begun the uh, process with architecture, working with the uh, 
the operator and, and a wellness center four, we received three uh, responses from possible operators and we're moving along with that process on reviewing those and make a recommendation to this body and on to council. Trails and sidewalks, uh, construction continues at Lake Draper. Um, some sidewalks are still under construction. Convention Center um, is well under construction. If you've driven by there, you can see that one of the uh, stair towers is up and it's pretty much to the height that it's gonna be. You can start getting a feel for how big the, the Convention Center is gonna be, but the weather has certainly been a challenge for them out there drilling in the mud. And, and same thing with the park. Uh, weather has been a challenge, but they've made uh, great strides in, in completing that. There's uh, about 160 trees that are in the ground and just last week they sodded part of the, the large berm out there, so it's really taken shape. Um, streetcar, we, I think we talked a lot about streetcar, so like I said, we have a, a lot going on and happy with where we are. Questions for David? All right, uh, item 14, comments by the board. I, I know you've already heard this, but just to underscore it, December the 14th, is the day that we're going to, I guess, uh, uh, kick off our streetcar. Is that right? December the 14th. And uh, big plans in the park uh, for September of 2019. Yes, actually, uh, uh, Maureen Heffernan uh, gave us a report talking about the newest employee that's going to be hired for Scissortail Park, and that person will be responsible for getting the um, opening days kick off, um, which are now planned uh, for September 5th through 8th. Uh, it will be centered around um, a giant food festival theme, kind of the 50 best foods in Oklahoma City that you need to eat before you die. Um, we're talking about concerts, fun things for kids, some kind of um, unusual release. Um, there was a, a lot of things touted, and uh, it looks like it's going to be a great day uh, or days in September. Very exciting. Anything else from the board? All right, staff, any member of the staff? Carol, are you okay with how we're doing? Okay. It's always great to hear from our lawyer. Thank you. Uh, citizens that are here, any citizens want to be heard today? If not, that concludes the business items. Uh, Michael Dover wanted to move that we adjourn, uh, and D, you wanted to second it? Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. Further discussion, all in favor say aye. Aye, opposed, no. We are adjourned, thank you.